Welcome back to Plus TV Africa. Time for us to check out the front pages of our national dailies as we have Femi Lawson, who's a public affairs analyst, join in the conversation as we proceed. It's good to have you join us, Femi Lawson. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. All right, so I, I start off with the leadership newspaper this morning, and let's find out uh, what big stories are making it on the front pages of uh, a national dealers. Now, on the leadership newspaper, you have six days to Anambra poll. Residents flee over rising insecurity. And that's on page four. Six days to Anambra poll. Residents flee over rising insecurity. Uh, it's a bold caption. Sporadic gunfire frightens resident two killed in cold clash. It's a rider because you have uh, three riders. Uh, that's the first rider you have. Please assure resident of adequate security. Uh, call for calm. Traditional religious leaders warn IPOP against hampering conduct of election. That's uh, underneath the bold caption of the leadership newspaper, security concerns. Tanker explosion kills three in Niger state, and that's also another caption you find on page six of the leadership newspaper. Proscribe Amotekun, Northern youths tell federal government. Oh, that's also interesting. Uh, you also have CBN releases criteria for companies' participation in 100 for 100 PPP, that's on page seven. I'm sure you want to find out what's that, uh, what's that about. Uh, you get all of the information. Irabo wants voluntary retirement for 19 victimized generals. And uh, another interesting caption on the leadership newspaper this morning. But that's the much we can take on the leadership newspaper. Uh, would we'll definitely turn our attention to the daily independent newspaper. Now the Daily Independent newspaper is reporting quite different from what you have on the leadership in terms of the board caption. Uh, you have food prices hit rooftop despite declining headline inflation. Uh, food prices hit top rooftop despite declining headline inflation. Uh, that's on page two, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Now FEMS worry over Erosion of profit margins, you have drop in sales, decline in turnover, weak manufacturing capacity utilization. Uh, these are some of the uh, caption on the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Now, looking at another caption, you find CBN kicks off initiative to support 100 companies in 100 days. Uh, that was also captured. Uh, in the leadership newspaper as well. You have Reps Pandev condemns siege on Justice Odile's residence. Reps Pandev condemns siege on Justice Odile's residence. Uh, invasion ploy to plant incriminating materials. Opposition party is quoted. Now, we can ask federal government to unmask those behind invasion in 48 hours. Uh, this is also what's generating conversation as well this morning. And uh, just before we move away from the Daily Independent newspaper, you find Tunubu meets Buhari at Aso Rock and lords his exceptional leadership. And that's on page 25. National Convention, PDP lets off battle cry for Aso Rock in 2023, uh, just as they say, Success of convention is a quick notice to the APC. Party governors exhibit and four state of 2022 primary elections. Uh, this is some of the riders you find this morning on the Daily Independent newspaper. I'm sure you'd like to pick up a copy to um, read all of the information. Now, let's move away from that and check out the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. On the board caption, you find how poor state of Abuja Kaduna Road AIDS accident and kidnappings. Now, this is a very strong argument and angle that has been pushed over time. For every time that we have, uh, you know, a situation of you have accident on our roads and the issue of kidnappings. Uh, some Nigerians have said that, yes, it is the state of the road that is majorly a concern. 
Many lives lost to accident is the first rider you find. Commuters groan and call for speedy work. Payment issues and rain responsible for delay. Oh yes, all of that excuse. Uh, you find the federal government quoted on that. How informants and all others collaborators fuel banditry. Uh, it's also another caption you find this morning on the front page of the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. And uh, still looking at it, just before we move away, you also find domestic airfares skyrocket despite new airlines' entry. Domestic airfares skyrocket despite new airlines' entry. Uh, that's also another bold caption on the Daily Independent newspaper. Now you have in security, others caught Nigeria's foreign investment to $875 million, lowest in five years. Uh, that's on page 27, if I'm not mistaken. Mixed reaction. Trail Fashola and Shawolu's monthly rental pro proposal. Uh, that's also another caption on page 22 of the Daily Independent newspaper. Now, CBN unveils criteria for supporting 100 local firms in 100 days, dominating all of the pages this morning. And you have kidnappers abduct chief imam and two sons in Abuja. Now, the issue of kidnapping uh, seems to be thriving every day. And uh, that's it on the Daily Trust newspaper. Moving away from that, let's check out the Punch newspaper this morning. On the front page of the Punch newspaper, you find Nigeria lost 898.93 billion naira to pipeline vandalism theft in nine months. It's a bold caption. An oil firm lose thousand of barrels of crude oil to pipeline damage. Uh, that's what you also find. Vandalism, dangerous, crippling revenue generation. You find expert quoted on that. And talking about Anambra elections, you have uh, this caption saying, Anambra decides 2021. 76,104 voters in five local governments may not vote, says who find out who's quoted on that one. Use Anambra Ekiti polls to boost uh, your image, Bishop tells INEC, uh, just as we anticipate the election come the 6th of November, uh, just uh, five days to that election. Uh, you find that on page 22 of the Punch newspaper this morning. And you find banks begin deduction of loans from chronic debtors and accounts. Uh, I'd like to take that again. Banks begin deduction of loans from chronic debtors' accounts. That's on page uh, 33 of the Punch newspaper this morning. And the issue of fraud, you have $11 million fraud caught others interim for feature of uh, obese house and cars. That's on page three of the Punch newspaper this morning. Uh, we just check out one or two headlines just before we have Femi Lawson join the conversation this morning. Now, a man arrested for defying 10-year-old left behind by murder in Ondo State. Uh, it's really, really sad, the issue of uh, pedophiles in our country. And that's on page five. Away from that, you also have a Moteku arrest teenager with 50 kg sack of Indian hem in Oshun state. And vendors failed to embrace Inara as download stall at 220,000. Nursing mother on bail for attempting or for attempted drug smuggling, rearrested for trafficking. Uh, that's also another one on page four and five of uh, the Punch newspaper. You also find PDP governors move against MAC to reduce military influence, where uh, that's also on page two. Uh, pick up a copy of the Punch newspaper as well as others. I'm sure you get all of the information that you desire. Uh, we head straight to sharing the thoughts of Femi Lawson, who is on standby. Once again, thank you for joining us and good morning, Femi Lawson. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so le let's start with. Um, the leadership newspaper, six days to Anambra elections. Residents are already fleeing uh, due to the rising uh, insecurity concern in the state. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, the, the situation in Anambra is uh, 
going to be a major test you know, for our democracy and the, the future of elections in Nigeria, particularly as we approach the next government election in the United States, and of course the 2023 general election. It is unfortunate that uh, those characters behind the rising state of insecurity in Onambra seems to be winning and they have greatly you know, impacted negatively on the resolve of the people of Anambra State to elect a new governor next Saturday. It is very unfortunate that uh, the security agencies seems to remain helpless despite weeks of effort being made. It is very sad that almost on a daily basis you still find these people you know, referred to as unknown government attacking one formation or the other, you know, intimidating people, which is their ultimate aim, you know, of preventing the people to freely elect their next governor come Saturday. But I think the time available between now and the election should be used by stakeholders, not just the security agencies, including the political parties, the traditional rulers, the incumbent leadership, to build the confidence of the people and assure them that going out to vote on Saturday does not become a death sentence. So it is very important but very sad that uh, these criminal elements you know, are already achieving their aim of ensuring that the people do not you know, come out to participate in the election. Okay, but shouldn't we have um, some level of uh, peace and some level of um, assurance that everything is going to go well with the fact that we have, uh, you know, that number of security personnel uh, deployed to that particular region? Because, I mean, that should guarantee some kind of peace. So uh, why is the opposite happening? The assurance... They have to go beyond their ways in the circumstance that even with the presence of every security personnel, just like a witness three days ago, these criminal elements are still perpetrating their evil. In actual fact, there was a clash between some of these criminal elements and the cover of security agencies. Remember also that just three days ago, these criminal elements also attacked. A, couple, a team of Department of State Service you know, personnel who are also on patrol for this election. So it is now beyond giving mere assurances in ways. But people, especially the stakeholders, must come out and collectively denounce violence and collectively ensure that the people are assured that coming out to vote will not mean and then, you know, or a threat to their life. All political parties should collectively come out. The government government should come out. And other stakeholders, including the traditional institutions, you know, should come out. And, you know, and the truth is that why it looks like these attackers are ghosts is something that should also worry us. I mean, it is time for people to begin to unveil there is register of these criminals who are perpetrating this you know, crime against humanity in another state. So if all this are done, the people can be rest assured. But it's not going to be enough you know, for people to be assured on the basis of the press statement from the neck or from the police. What is happening in another state is now beyond that. All right, let's also still stay with the leadership newspaper this morning. Another interesting headline is that the Chief of Defense Staff, uh, Lucky Rabo, is asking that uh, there should be voluntary retirement for 19 victimized generals. Uh, what do you make of this? Well, it is, uh, it is fair, especially when the Army, you know, has not shown any willingness to reassure of these people back into the service. It will uh, be said that 
they are allowed you know, to exit the service in the ceremonial manner demanded for the you know, military personnel of their rank. It is not enough for people to have attained the rank of generals in the army and you leave them out in such an unceremonious manner. So, it is a reconciliation step on the part of the Chief of Defense Staff, and it is believed that the Nigerian Army leadership would work in line with it and ensure that these people who have spent you know, a good number of their years you know, to serve the country and not just, you know, his out of the job in such a not ceremonious manner in the way it has been done. I think uh, the Army Authority must work in line with this proposal by the two of the first general in Abu Amen allow these people you know, to have a beautiful end to their career. Okay, uh, away from the leadership newspaper, uh, another interesting um, caption says, food prices hit root, uh, rooftop despite uh, declining headline inflation. So uh, I'm sure that if you also patronize the market, that's on Daily Independent newspaper, uh, the food prices seem to be going up despite the fact that we hear that, oh, you know, inflation is declining. And uh, w what can we do? What can the government do? What can the people do at this point in time? Especially when you look at the time we are living in as a country, and uh, beyond the series of uh, policies and factors that have become responsible for the general inflation being witnessed in the country, the particular you know, astronomical increment in the prices of food cannot also, cannot also be disconnected you know, from the rising state of insecurity that has practically you know, sent a huge number of our farmers away from the farms and our local production capacity becoming decreasing almost on a daily basis. So beyond the series of economic policies that is aiding, you know, inflation across every sector of the economy, the issue of food security is important, is crucial, and the rising cost of food prices cannot be disconnected from the rising state of insecurity that seems to have you know, become uncontrollable as we speak. You know, farmers have been sent away in droves from their farms in Bende, in Plateau, to Kebi, you know, other parts of the country where a lot of uh, locally consumed you know, foods are, are, are brought from. So it's a frightening dimension. And I think the government must begin to look at how to address the question of insecurity as a national emergency. Because if this goes beyond what we are currently witnessing, we may be approaching a, you know, a moment where even with money in our hands, the food may not be available in the market to buy, which is going to be a very dangerous time for us as a people. Okay, but uh, shouldn't we have some, uh, yes, I understand that you have mentioned some factors that could be responsible or that is really responsible for, you know, the inflation that we might just be experiencing, uh, talking about uh, the prices of food amongst others. Now, um, shouldn't we have some, you know, pricing mechanism? Because there are some times where you just find the prices of goods just unnecessary. I mean, you just, the increase, you cannot explain it. Overboard. Now, should we not have, you know, some uh, price mechanism, some uh, control mechanism, maybe by government or uh, agencies, just to help ensure that, you know, the rights of uh, citizens are protected? There ordinarily should be, you know, a price control mechanism, especially at, at times like we are currently witnessing. But the truth is that. What has been even the role of government, you know, ensuring in ensuring productivity? What has been the role of government in supporting, you know, 
small scale importers of some of these food items that are consumed locally. Government will only have influence and be morally responsible to control certain things, including prices. If it is involved, you know, in production, if it is involved in proper regulation of import, you know, export, if it is involved in also, you know, financing of some of the productivity, you know, behind food supply in the country. The truth is that if the government are fairly considered today responsible for any of this, so for people who go out of their own way to make purchases or to produce food, it becomes difficult for some people to sit somewhere and begin to determine prices for them. It is very difficult. And that is why government must begin to look at how it can possibly, uh, positively, you know, get involved in supporting, you know, genuine uh, entrepreneurs who are in the food production, both locally and those who have been, you know, bringing some of those foreign products that are consumed in Nigeria, rather than just sitting down in the name of for some foreign policies, giving funds to politicians in the name of, you know, agropreneur and all those, you know, manner of uh, finances so, that are the witnesses that has no impact directly on productivity in the country, especially in the agricultural sector. If we don't do this, it may be difficult for us to expect government to sit down somewhere and decide how much I will sell the tubers of yam and taking the risk of kidnapping and whatever to go and bring from, from, the, from the north to Lagos. It may be very difficult. All right, uh, let's move away from that now. Uh, looking at the national convention ahead of uh, the 2023 elections, uh, PDP is saying that, you know, the success of the convention is a quick notice to the APC. Do you think it's a quick notice to the APC uh, ahead of 2023? Looking at Arsenal Rock, it feels like that's the goal. Well, it is a progressive step that the party conducted its convention, of course, that has ended in such a peaceful manner. But PDP must understand that uh, sending the APC out of power in 2023 is definitely beyond the success of the, the National Convention of the Party to elect officers for the party. The more fundamental step that I think the party must look forward to taking is, you know, presenting candidates that are credible, marketable, and acceptable to Nigerians for the 2023 election. If that is not done, it may, near, it may become a mere dream to assume that that convention will serve as a quick notice you know, for the ruling APC. So the PDP must position itself to offer Nigerians what we will see as being better than what it is currently offering Nigerians. Without that, I don't think it is automatic for any political party to assume that uh, Nigerians are going to use it to replace the other without any credible alternative. All right, another interesting headline here says, Reps and Pandev condemn siege on justice or Delhi's residents. And uh, of course, we know that the governor of River State, Yesam Wike, has issued an ultimatum to the federal government. In 48 hours, probe those behind us, bring them to book. Uh, what are your thoughts? First of all, what do you think about this siege? And secondly, you have the fact that... Um, uh, the Attorney General of the Federation is saying he's not in the know, denying involvement. The federal government seemed not to be in the know. And the question is who raided, who ordered the raid? It, 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 it has become the norm for government, particularly those ones that are fingered to perpetuate this kind of abnormal actions to deny it. But we must recall that there have been so many media coverage of that incident. We have seen available evidences of uh, 
photographs, identity cards of people who, who participated in that illegal raid, the you know, bearing the you know, addresses of the office of the Attorney General of the Federation. But I think we should be sober and seriously worried as Nigeria that this is happening again. This is nothing but a mere attempt you know, to intimidate the judiciary again. If anybody thinks this was intended to just, you know, attack the personality of Justice Mary Odile of the Supreme Court, then we may not be getting it right. The truth is that those behind this terrible act are housed again for the judiciary, just like they have done in the past, and they have become you no know, instruments that now threaten our democracy because if the judiciary as an institution can be so desecrated in the manner these people are doing it, then what is the hope of the ordinary Nigerian working on the street? Because the judiciary, particularly the Supreme Court, should be the most respected, most sacred institution of our democracy. But today it has become an object, you know, of all sort of assault by people who are not really have no business you know, trying to, 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 to investigate how the judiciary runs business. What is being done is targeted at this woman just to harass and intimidate her, just like they have done in the past to other justices, including the forceful retirement of former CJ and what are the way. And I think Nigeria must not sit back and see this as another drama. This is not a drama. These people have been, and we must see this as a threat to democracy. And it must not be taken lightly. Okay, uh, I like the fact that you also uh, mentioned the fact that yes, uh, it feels like it's uh, it's a semblance of what happened, uh, particularly with uh, Justice Walter Onog and his removal. And uh, some Nigerians, some quarters are saying this is just it because prior to the 2019 elections, uh, you also have this happening, which led way to you know, having uh, Tanko. And now this is also the same thing. Do, do you think that this is the same ploy? Uh, 2023 is uh, just uh, in front of us, and this also might just be a ploy to remove her and have another justice. It is not uh, impossible, and you cannot really disconnect this assault from the political desperation of people who are in power today. Because even when there are issues of you know, mistrust, or even if a crime is perpetrated by a judge in Nigeria, there is a law, there is a collateral procedure, there is an institution empowered to, you know, to investigate and deal with judges in Nigeria. That is the NJC. So it is not within the power of the Attorney General or whichever office or whoever to so begin to, you know, raid and arrest and begin to assault judges under the, you know, the guise of wanting to enforce one discipline or probe one action or the other. This is an assault. And these people are deliberately attacking this sacred institution of democracy. The attempt by the executive to put the judiciary in its pocket, just like they achieved with the removal of the former CJA, is condemnable and we will continue to speak against this because the judiciary is an independent arm created by the law, just like the executive itself. So it is not the business of one to not begin to superintend over the one that it, it has not been given the power to do. Our law does not give any power to the attorney general, not even to the president, without some procedure to deal with any judge in Nigeria. So why should they continue this culture of harassment? Just because they want to you know, impose maybe another person as the head of the judiciary in Nigeria. It is wrong. And that is primarily why this assault is taking place.
Okay, but what, what can the judiciary do at this point in time? I mean, uh, the hope of the common man. Is there anything that can be done? How uh, can they uh, pursue that uh, this does not occur in the future? Well, the greatest defense for any institution of democracy is the people. Power resides in the hands of the people. The sovereignty of this country belongs to us. Ask Nigerians, not to any president or chief justice or governor or whoever. So the owners of the sovereignty, the Nigerian people, must first and foremost see the need to rise and continue to defend democracy, especially when they are hard sought some, from some of these operatives of government like we are witnessing. The, the, the judiciary also must reaffirm its stand and its independence in the face of all this harassment. By now, one would have expected that National Judicial Council and all the institutions of you know, judiciary begin to speak out to conduct this harassment. It is good that the Nigerian Bar Association has risen against it, but it must go beyond that. But ultimately, it is the Nigerian people that have the most important responsibility of defending the institutions of our democracy, which the judiciary is a very crucial part of. Okay, let's move away from the uh, talk on the judiciary and look at uh, the Daily Trust newspaper. Now, the state of accident and kidnappings uh, in Abuja Kaduna roads attributed to the poor state of the roads. They are saying that uh, the roads are really bad and this is aiding accident and kidnappings. Uh, and we know that constantly we've heard that, you know, several resources, uh, funds have been released and all of that. The roads are still horrible. For, for regular travelers like us, the truth is that the terrible state of roads is not just limited to Abuja Kaduna. In matter of fact, some other roads linking other parts of the country to Abuja are also in, you know, in more terrible conditions. If you look at the road through Niger State to Abuja, a very terrible route to pass through. The moment you leave Abuja to Nokoja, every other road taking you to Ikiti, another part of the country, are in such terrible conditions. And people have been taken on a daily basis, almost on a daily basis, on these roads. Kidnapping happens almost every time, you know, on every part of the road. So traveling from Abuja to Edo State, traveling from Abuja to the Southeast, traveling from Abuja to some part of that's our state. So it's a call for collective action on the part of the federal government. Year in, year out, we see budget tree allocation made for these roads. There is no year that allocations are not made for rehabilitation and reconstruction. Why have these roads remained in this perpetual state of disrepair? It is terrible. And it, is, it, 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 it should be worrisome that when you leave the roads in this terrible shape, not only you know, causing accidents, but now exposing our people to these criminal elements who now pick them you know, along the you know, wherever they travel. It is very sad. And practical action must be seen to be taken, both in repair of these infrastructures an improvement of security on our roads. Okay, still staying with the Daily Trust. Let's also share your thoughts on this particular headline uh, that says, Insecurity Others Caught Nigeria's Foreign Investment to $875 million. Uh, it's the lowest in five years. And uh, you also have this. I want you to also uh, react on this as well. How informants and others, collaborators, feel banditry. Uh, these are some of the reports that we have here this morning on the Daily Trust. The issue of uh, terrorism that we have continued to codename as banditry is really disturbing to me in particular. And I think this is a major issue of worry to Nigeria, particularly our brothers in some particular part of the country in the north. 
You see, the truth is that in every system, even when there's no I change this situation like we have in Nigeria. There are always saboteurs. There's always a tendency for criminal elements to have people within the population who provide information for, to them and who encourage their actions. But what matters is the ability of the authority of government to meet this in the board. If we have invested enough in intelligence gathering and of course working with the citizens towards ending these challenges of insecurity. I think there will be a great reduction in the capacity of informants to supply information to these criminals, thereby forcing the, the effort of our security agencies. It is worrisome that the government is not working enough with the people. And that is why the criminal seems to have more, you know, more people, more informants among the people than the government. So the government must do more to work with the people, but only in the local communities. It is a major way of tackling insecurity. You cannot sit down in Abuja or the state capital and control our towns and military personnel just to move into communities that they have no knowledge of what is happening here, there, other than what the year or where reports are made, you must be able to work with the people locally. These are the people who have first hand knowledge of the activities of these criminals. And that is the only way, you know, genuine you know, progress can be made in the war against you know terrorism in the country. Okay, and uh, let's quickly see if we can take this uh, for the want of time. Uh uh, the Punch newspaper is saying Nigeria lost 898.93 I beg your pardon, billion naira to pipeline vandalism theft in nine months. Uh, so, uh, I mean, that's a lot of money uh, right there. And uh, if, you know, the issue of uh, theft and pipeline vandalism has been ongoing, why haven't we been able to put an end to it, stop it? or, you know, control the extent at which that happens? Hmm. You see, the, the business of oil theft through pipeline vandalism is not a business of the young, of the children, of the, of the ordinary citizen. It is such a sophisticated business, aided by agents of the state, particularly the security, agents deployed to monitor the pipeline and all those oil producing regions. So beyond the lamentation of nearly one trillion, as the record has put it now, that the country is losing to the activities of this criminal, I think we are at a point where the government itself must be sincere if it is interested in fighting pipeline vandalism and all it turns to the country. This is not perpetrated by gold. Crude oil is first stolen with through Jerry Khan and Nylon and Polythene Bank. This is a sophisticated business. This is a you know, system that involves you know, a lot of people through the chain. But we continue to ask and see the perpetrators are ghosts. They are not ghosts. So the government must be sincere with itself rather than lamenting and telling Nigerians what is being, what is being lost to the activities of criminal elements called pipeline vandals to the point that it is willing to now come out and fight this manner that is now depleting you know the economic prospects of the country. Without doing that, I don't see any sense of seriousness in this lamentation that uh, the government is uh, taking us to. All right, thank you so much, Femi Lawson, for uh, being part of uh, the newspaper review this morning and helping us to understand uh, some of the caption or the headlines on the front pages of our national dailies. We do appreciate uh, your time, and we look forward to having uh, you on a different it's occasion. It's thank you so much. Uh, we'll stop on the breaks right now. When we return, we will be taking you back in history to what happened uh, sometime today, 2012, where... Parents actually killed their daughter with acid. 
Stick around, we'll be right back. <laughs> 